The Steelers have interest in Russell Wilson. Does that mean he's coming to Pittsburgh? We'll talk about that here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast today. Joined by Josh Taylor right here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show, for the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you got to download. It makes it easier to buy tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. More on them later. We got to talk to my man, Josh Taylor. It's been a minute. I think we haven't had you on since like December, but you know, my guy, my guy's pulling double dad duty over there. So I don't want to terrorize him too much, but Josh, when we saw the news bust out that Russell Wilson, or there's interest from the Steelers, Jerry Dulac uh, partner, one of my colleagues at the Post-Gazette, the Steelers are interested in Russell Wilson. And now he's coming in for a visit. It now opens up the door. Okay. The Steelers are willing to do this move at quarterback. Maybe Josh, give me your reaction to the idea of Russell Wilson coming to the Steelers. And do you think it actually happens? Imagine my surprise when uh, I'm running around doing some errands, getting ready for a trip out, out of town with the family. We're going to go visit my in-laws for the weekend and, uh, I'm just kind of getting stuff together. And for some odd reason, this stuff always happens when I get ready to go somewhere. Like, that's just, and you probably encountered this too. It's your day off. You're probably on vacation. Get ready to go somewhere. And some big news hits. And you're like, really? It has to happen now? So, yeah, just imagine my surprise when you see the report from Jerry Dulac that the Steelers are interested in Russell Wilson and, you know, they're trying to arrange a visit, and especially with all the discussion that's surrounded the quarterback position for the last couple of weeks. I mean, we talked about it locally. You've heard about it nationally. A couple of different hosts have discussed it. it it's been a big big topic and now it's finally you know it's starting to actually have legs it's finally starting to have life to it which of course gives you a lot of time to think about it that chris i've gone in like four different directions i think when the season first ended and the discussion around russell wilson first started my first reaction was like no way there's there's no way i'd be interested in anything like that happening for this team then as time went along and you understood the salary cap machinations of it all. You understood what it would mean for Denver to let him go. And then you think about it and go, okay, well, it's not a risk as far as draft picks because it's not a trade. It's not a risk as far as salary cap because Denver's footing the bill. And the more you think about it, the more you think about exactly Russell, what Russell Wilson did last season for, for Denver. And a lot of people look at some of the losses they had and they immediately just dropped that on him, which I don't think was fair. And then you look at the fact that he had a three to one touchdown to interception ratio and threw more touchdowns this past season than Pittsburgh quarterbacks have in the past two seasons. And you're thinking that at the very least, it may seem like a bad idea, but is it worse than what you have right now? And considering the fact that you only have one quarterback left on the roster compared to the three you had the past two seasons, is it that terrible of a concept? It isn't to me at this point. Now that you know the exact financial risk involved it doesn't seem like a bad idea at the very least and this is how i'm looking at it now at the very least it's good because maybe you have an insurance policy against kenny pickett at right. best it's good because you might have a starter and some considerable depth at your position in case something goes wrong so for me in that particular instance considering the fact that the things that would normally count against him are no longer on the table anymore it becomes a very low risk potentially high reward me for the Steelers. So in that case, I like this because I think it can help this team, especially considering they got a new offensive coordinator. We know what we're expecting them to do on offense now. He's a guy that actually fits what we project them to do offensively coming up this upcoming season. So it all makes sense to me. That that to me seems like the like the reasonable part here. Like again, like I've said, listen, financially it makes sense. Uh, you know, if you want a quarterback that that that, that can come in, R Russell Wilson is the lowest cost guy to bring in, and that does make sense. 
I've been I've been on the side of I wasn't sure that they do this because of the perceived drama that was in Seattle, where you have guys like Marshawn Lynch and Richard Sherman talking bad talking bad about Russell Wilson and how he wasn't a good teammate. Then you saw how everything went down in Denver, and, and you're right, some of that wasn't on, on him. Nathaniel Hackett was. That was a rough situation. He thought he was getting Aaron Rodgers. He didn't get Aaron Rodgers, and that that was a terrible spot. And then Sean Payton comes in and wants nothing to do with Russell Wilson. And granted, there was some of that too that you know you saw teammates of Russell Wilson's on the sidelines, you know, snapping off at him at sometimes. Maybe there was some stuff there with, with Russell, uh, but I think that's why the Steelers are, are bringing him in to take a look because it's like, look, this is a Super Bowl champion quarterback who's made nine Pro Bowls in his career, and he you you can get him without trading for him. And you could get him without pay, breaking the bank for him. You owe it to yourself to at least bring him in and assess who is this guy really? Is he someone that we think that would that would bust up the locker room? And that was, I think, that's been the biggest concern for a lot of on a lot of respects for the Steelers as far as getting Russell Wilson. Is he this problem? And if he's not, it makes a lot of a sense a lot of sense to add him to the room. I also think. It, it says this, like, you know, this, uh, we, we talked a lot about the Steelers and then you know, the Steelers said they're, they want to add competition for Kenny Pickett in the quarterback room. We saw that competition as Mason Rudolph, as Ryan Tannehill, guys like that, that would be that would be in the, in, in the focus. Russell Wilson is a completely different level of competition. And I think that's what's extremely interesting about this is this is the Steelers saying, oh, no, 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 no. We are getting people that if Kenny Pickett doesn't prove himself. There's there's a guy here who could play the system. And to your point about how well he's played in his career, uh, or no, excuse me, just last year, not even in his career, his, just in last year, extremely efficient in play action, which we assume will be a big part of the Steelers' offense with Arthur Smith. Out of the, um, just hold on, get my numbers here straight. Out of the, uh, I think he had 120 plays where he called play action, he completed 64.7% of those passes for 740 yards. That's 7.3 yards per attempt. That's 11 touchdowns to one interception as, as well. Uh, to me, that's a great sign that that Russell Wilson can very much be the guy that the this, this, this Steelers need to kind of run the offense. For a comparison, the Steelers had Kenny Pickett throw play action a lot less. He still he went, he went threw two touchdowns, no interceptions, but also a 7.3 yards per attempt average there in their total yards per attempt. I, I Again, Russell Wilson makes sense. The question is, does he fit? And again, this this the news is that he is visiting. He has not signed yet. But Josh, if if he's not a locker room problem, and you bring him to Pittsburgh, I think that's an it's certainly an intriguing situation, and I think it puts to bed the idea that the Steelers are just going to roll with Kenny Pickett no matter what. There's also the other added element to this. And it's an added element with just about any Steelers free agent that comes in, especially the bigger the name as it gets going up the ladder. What's the one thing that you hear big name or at least somewhat moderately popular name free agents talk about when it, when it comes to the opportunity to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers? It usually goes hand in hand, that player's interest in playing for this team. The interest to play for, for Mike Tom usually goes hand in hand. That becomes another element, another layer added to this for Russell Wilson, because now you've got two guys pretty much in the same boat. Russell Wilson's been to two Super Bowls and won one. Mike Thompson has been to two Super Bowls and won one, and neither of them has won in a while. You've got two guys that both have something to prove. You hmm. have two guys that are both, you know, in some cases, somewhat maligned, both within this city and outside of it. So it becomes that common ground, and if, if I can expect Mike Tomlin to do anything, I can expect the same guy who had to call Ryan Clark, uh, you know, undrafted free agent. I can see him doing the same thing with Russell Wilson saying, look, dude, we, we, we're trying to get back and do this together. I, I want to get back and do this too. I know you want to get back there and do this too. That's a whole other element that you kind of put on top of it because, because it likes the layer of icing on that cake. So I'm really intrigued as to how this goes down and how they put this whole thing together. But as far as the, the I guess, the fit, Idealistically, it makes sense for me, but I'm curious as to what either side wants as far as expectations and if they can find that common ground. I want to talk more about this is specifically because the idea, if you bring in Russell Wilson, doesn't that automatically make him QB1? We'll talk more about that here on the other side of the first break of the Lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Josh Taylor. Stick with us. we got a lot more to discuss. But first, I want to remind you that this show is also sponsored by Robinhood. 
Robin, Robin Hood is here because if you didn't know that even if you have a 401k in retirement, you could still have an IRA. That's where Robin Hood comes to help because it has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when, when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other re retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim is, that, is as of quarter one in 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Invest, investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robin Hood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Josh Taylor. Uh, Josh, let's get right into the point that I just made, like, uh, or the question I just asked. Does Russell Wilson automatically just unseat? Kenny pick if the Steelers sign him again they haven't signed him as of right now we're recording this Thursday uh mid-afternoon uh he's set to visit the Steelers if he if he comes in does he unseat Kenny Pickett as QB1 if we look back I look just just the last two years when since Kenny Pickett's been in the league here are their stats by side by side these are also Russell Wilson's Denver stats uh Russell Wilson's played 30 games to Kenny Pickett's 25 uh Russell Wilson is 11 19 as a starter Kenny Pickett 14 and 10 Russell Wilson's completion percentage, 63.6, just three, a, a little bit less than 1% more than Kenny Pick, Pickett's 62.6. Russell Wilson's yardage, though, much higher, 6,594 yards to Kenny Pickett's 4,400, 4, and it's 7.1 yards per, per attempt to Kenny Pickett's 6.3. Um, also has 42 touchdown passes to Kenny Pickett's 13. I think that's a big part of the equation there. But at the same time, Kenny Pickett has 13 interceptions. Uh, Russell Wilson's nine, but that and wins are the only two stats that Kenny Pickett can claim over Russell Wilson, even efficiency stats. When it comes to the passer rating, Russell Wilson is 90.9 to Kenny Pickett's 78.8. Russell, Russell Wilson's gained more yards on the ground, 4.6 yards per carry to 3.0. He's gotten more rushing touchdowns. All the numbers say here, Russell Wilson, if, he, if you sign him, He's got to be QB1 unless Kenny Pickett does some amazing stuff in training camp. Is is that going to be the case, Josh? I have to take a quick pause here because I was almost laughing there for a second. You missed a clear 13 and 9 reference, and I admire your restraint. No, no, it was 13 19. 13 19. Trust well, me, <laughs> I am on my game. Oh, I'm I'm on 13 9. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I missed it. I was sitting there going, wow, he passed a 13 and 9. I was almost shot there. Okay, never mind. But to answer your question, if you're looking at it on paper, the obvious answer is some, some, some would say, yeah, make him QB1. Here's the crazy part. I, I have, and this is, I don't know if I'm just programmed to just see so many things happen where like it just, it just becomes an expectation in my mind. I can very, very easily see this organization of all organizations doing that little trick that some college programs like to pull. Well, they'll release that depth chart and they'll give you the one name with the, the big or, or the or not underline. not number one and two in italics oh, no name or second name could easily see them doing that just to make it more interesting and honestly i think it's going to come down to it the obvious answer for some people would say yes make them automatic qb1 but i like the thought of whoever your qb1 is going to be he's going to have to earn it whether yeah. it's Kenny Pickett, who's going to look like the underdog on paper, he's going to have to prove that he can still be the guy, or Russell Wilson, who's now with his third team in, what, four seasons? Mm -hmm. He's going to prove that he's still worthy to be a starter in this league. So I actually don't hate the or scenario. I just think it's a funny thing in my mind that I can see happening. But at this point, neither one is. Neither one's QB1. Whoever's going to be QB1 has got to earn it. That's how I look at it. So I don't think it's automatic. At least I don't think it should be automatic. I think if you're the Steelers organization, if you're Mike Tomlin, you say whoever we bring in, whether it's Russell Wilson, whether it's someone else, whether it's a guy you draft, whoever's going to be QB1 is going to have to prove that he deserves to be QB1. 
uh, and that's where I'm at is that I, I think that I hear the people that are like, well, Russell Wilson's just, he's been better. Why is this even a question? I think part of it's also Kenny Pickett. This is, this is his team. He's been with them for two years. Now it's his third year with the team. And you're going to give him that shot, at least to start of like OTAs and such. But I do think it's going to be like a, look, you got to come prepared. You got to come cooking. And if Russell Wilson comes in and, and out, performance you in practice we, i think we'll see that in the steelers locker room we'll see those questions start to perk up if russell's smoother if he's leading more if he's doing those things the, that this is and all, another thing here josh i have nothing to go off of this in my time covering the steelers or my time just paying attention to the steelers since i was a kid like i have never seen this organization have to deal with something like this where until like, you have to go back to like when tommy maddox was brought in from the xfl uh with with cordell stewart and that's not even close to what this is right like ben roethlisberger since they drafted him it was ben roethlisberger and no wh whoever you were brought in you were there to be number two or, or or less and then since then you had mitch trubisky and mason Rudolph and kenny pickett and that's where we're at now with kenny pickett's the last standing of that group unless they resign mason Rudolph as well so Russell Wilson coming in, I don't have a historical context to this. I don't have, you know, organizational practices to go back over. I, I think it's going to be like what you said. They're going to say, okay, it's an open competition. Go get it. And if Kenny Pickett rises to the occasion, they'll take him. And I think if, even if it's like even, they might take K Kenny Pickett. But if Russell Wilson's just that much better and Kenny Pickett feels like, oh, well, they, did, they didn't trust me. It's like, look, man, they, they, they trusted you. With, with starts with 25 starts in your first two seasons and you you, you didn't get it done as a, a, a overall you got you had some great moments here and there there were flashes of like okay he's putting it together but there was never even a cons there wasn't even like Mason Rudolph's three game run Kenny Pickett didn't even have a run like that in his first two years so it's like he put him this this is on him and he has to go prove it and I think it'll be a big character test of Kenny Pickett to say hey how do you handle this? Do you take this as a challenge or do you take this as a slight? We've we've and we, we've seen we've seen people take things like this as, as slights. We've also seen people take this like the, things like this like challenges and say, you know what? I am QB one here. I am going to prove my worth. And if he does, if he beats out Russell Wilson legitimately and plays well quarterback next year, I think if anything, it forces all the people on all the players on the team, and it might even force the city of Pittsburgh to be like, we respect Kenny Pickett now. So to me. This is about challenging him, and if you don't, and if, if he loses out, guess what? You got a veteran quarterback who's been part of a Super Bowl champion and has been in the NFL for for a whole bunch of years, a nine time Pro Bowler. Uh, so that's not a that's a lot better of a situation, I think, to fall back on than you know a retread Ryan Tannehill, um, you know, or even Mason Rudolph, who I still think you know could should be on the Steelers' radar for everything that's happening. I'm glad you mentioned Tommy Maddox as a reference point because my brain did not want to go back to the Cordell Stewart Kent Grand days. Because I was old enough to remember those. I think I was in college when that was happening. And we we weren't too thrilled about it then, if I remember correctly, especially it, uh, those of my age group we weren't too happy about that situation. But that's where my mind automatically goes as far as the uncertainty at the quarterback position back then. But no, I think you bring up an interesting point. I think it, it – it kind of helps with the discussion surrounding Kenny Pickett because there's so much discussion surrounding Kenny Pickett as to is he really the guy and did he fumble the opportunity or did he not get a good enough opportunity, maybe with enough around him to prove how good he was. And if you put him in a situation where he has to beat out a proven veteran, like you mentioned, nine-time Pro Bowler, who's won a Super Bowl, you know, for all intents and purposes, has put together a Hall of Fame resume, can he beat that guy out? If he does, maybe the talk around him changes from, okay, well, why can't he seem to do this to, okay, he's proven he can beat this guy out, but can he at least show that he can make that leap going into the season? It does change the conversation around him. And I don't think it's a terrible thing in terms of having that competition and that, that, that conversation changing around him. I also don't think it hurts that you're putting both of these guys in a situation where – Okay, fine. They're expected to do a certain job as a quarterback, but there will not be as much emphasis on either of them to have to do a lot for this offense to be effective. We know there's going to be a dependence on the run game. We know there's going to be a dependence on Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. So now you also have that as, okay, go out and do it, but you don't. Just take what you got in front of you 
and, and do the thing. It's like, you know, most quarterbacks, maybe in other offenses, you might expect them to be, and forgive the comparison or forgive the analogy, you might expect them to be a Steph Curry, doing a lot of things on their own and dialing up some crazy stuff. Whereas they might only want their guy to be a Trey Young, a more facilitator, maybe a little bit more of a different style of play. And that might be the thing that helps either quarterback really succeed, maybe helps either one get over the hump as far as figuring out which one is head and shoulders above the other. I think that's a big part of this, man. It is you gotta you gotta see for sure. You have to be able to you have, you have to test these things out. I like the idea of, of not giving it to either and saying, you know what, go and improve this. But um, you know, I, I think it's, again, we still have to see if the plane lands here. Like, you know, the, the Steelers actually go through with this. Does Russell Wilson actually go through with this? Russell Wilson said in an interview, you know, would you know he wants to go win a Super Bowl? Does he see the Steelers as the team he wants to go win a Super Bowl with? That's that's still a question to, to to be answered. And you look around, look around at teams that don't have quarterbacks that that are that aren't going to be drafting a quarterback high to start them right away. Does Russell Wilson see this as the best opportunity to do that? You know, does he want to deal with you know competing with Kenny Pickett and maybe you know having to sit behind him if he thinks that he's outplaying him and he's not because of what the Steelers like him or whatever? Like those are all things that have to be considered. You know, do the Steelers? You know, want, again, the Steelers interview him and just think, nah, you know what? That's not for us. All that still has to be proven, but. The idea, the, the fact that we now know that the Steelers are interested in Russell Wilson heats up this quarterback topic a lot more than it was before, and I think it'll be very interesting to see if they follow through with it moving forward. Um, and also, I wonder is that the only quarterback free agent move they're going to make? Will they bring in Russell Wilson behind him, Ryan Tannehill? Do they want to go into you know uh, Omar Khan? Often has said you know the maintain the company policy. They want to go in to camp with at least three, sometimes four quarterback arms and you can't and if you're going into the draft with two it kind of pigeonholes you into uh having to draft one who's gonna who's gonna be there so um i, I think that there's some still some interesting things to be answered we'll see all of that how that how that plays out moving forward and we'll get more information on that soon about russell wilson but first before we end that we also got to talk about what might be one of the more interesting free agency pools in the in the nfl right now and that's the amount of really good safeties who are available, and that is a position of need. The Steelers have let go of Keanu Neal. We'll talk about the safeties in free agency right after this. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app that you need to download right now to your phone to help you make healthy you forgot, get buy tickets uh, at a much easier pace. Because when you're buying tickets, oftentimes you're running up against two big problems. Either A, tickets are too expensive, or B, if you're finding tickets that aren't as expensive, you, th- you feel like you might be getting scammed out of not great seats. Well, that's where Game Time comes in to give you the best of both worlds. You make sure that you're getting the right tickets for the right prices on the Game Time app. They give you killer deals, even on last minute tickets or tickets for up to an hour after your event has started with a best price guarantee that just can't be beat. The Game Time app, which you can download right to your phone, allows you to book tickets up to the last minute. And when you're doing so, you're able to see the view from the seats in the app to know, hey, this is the view for the event that I want to go to, whether that's a, that's a, that's a concert, whether it's a, a, a stand up comic, whether it's a theater, whether it's a, where's a sporting uh, uh, event. There's all the different ways the game time is so helpful to you to get tickets for all your favorite events. And, and their best price guarantee means that they'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section of row for less somewhere else for that same event, game time will credit you 110% of the difference of those prices. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase or go to the website gametime.co. Terms of this is apply. Create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Josh Taylor. You can always catch him at 93.7 in the fan, KDK TV. He's he's everywhere. Josh, let's talk about uh, the safety position because this we've talked a lot about quarterbacks, but safeties continues to look more and more interesting with free agency. And we said that, and this is what I said. When we, people always ask me at the end of the season, who would you get as free agents? Like, man, I don't know who's going to be a free agent because everybody gets cut like right before free agency starts. And then you actually get to see the pool. And lately now, one, the Steelers have let go of Keanu Neal. So they, they, they're they moving on from him. We'll see what they do with the Monte KZ. But now you have teams like the Broncos letting go four-time all-pro safety Justin Justin Simmons. So 
that's a that that's a that, that's the biggest name on the safety market now. Now other guys have come off it like Kyle Duggar. He's been I think he's 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 been tagged by the Patriots, so he's he's not going to be there. But the Bills also let go of their All Pro safety Jordan Poyer, so he's he's out there as well as their other other former uh, All Pro safety Micah Hine. There's also other former All Pros Kevin Byard, Jamal Adams, uh, all of them. Are, are are there and there's talks about you know other safeties that also could be added to the pool soon and that's already with an impressive pool of safeties and again Antoine Winfield Kyle Duggar they're off the board but guess what Cameron Curl of, of Washington's a big name Geno Stone of the Ravens had I think he had seven interceptions this season he's a big one my particular one of my particular favorites Julian Blackman of the Colts he's another one that I really like there's Jordan Fuller and then of course there's the local guy H2P man himself, Jordan Whitehead out of Pitt, who was just with the Jets. He'll be 27 this season. That There's just so many options, Josh. It makes a lot of sense to go get one or two of these guys. You Maybe not the most expensive ones, but like with the expensive guys out there, they're going to drive down the prices for some of these guys. And the Steelers might even say, you know what? Let's go get Blackman from the Colts and let's go get Whitehead. Now you have two guys who could play strong-ish safety and also move around and cover deep so that Mika Fitzpatrick can finally go back to what he was supposed to be, which is a pure center fielding free safety. You said the three names that when you look through this list all caught my attention. And two of them were obvious. Jordan Whitehead was obvious, right? Geno Stone was obvious. And nothing for the local times. He was a Newcastle kid. It was obvious, right? But then you went and said Julian Blackman, and that mm-hmm. started to perk my ears up because the reason why I like all three of those guys, set the local ties to the side. I think all three guys bring something that helped this team. But here's another part of it that I think is important, especially when we're talking about free agency. We're talking about a team that has a good bit of cap room now, especially with some of the stuff that Omar Khan's done. We know you can still make some machinations happen later on. Mm-hmm. But this team's cap number – and the cap space gets considerably larger in each of the next three years. So you can bring one of those three guys in, and you're not just signing them to maybe a two-year deal. You can get them get them to maybe three, four years. And the reason mm-hmm. why I like those three guys, the other reason why, 25, 26, 27. They're guys yep. in their mid to late 20s. They're right there in that window, along with Micah Fitzpatrick, where they're not too old yet. They and even be in their physical prime, you can get really good production out of them with what they can do, and you're doing it a good part of their careers. Where yes, they're going to be a little expensive, but you're going to get prime production, assuming they're healthy, out of them at that point. If that's the case, go get a free agent safety, get them at a good number, and get them at a good time to get them in this career in their physical prime, and get the most out of them. And like you said, plug them in the lineup, tell them they can get back there, go back and do your thing like you used to. Because now you got a guy that can come in. And by the way, you have only one guy that you need to do that job as opposed to two or three guys rotating in. Now you got one other safety to line up with Megan Fitzpatrick. You got two safeties doing two safeties jobs, and that's it. And it makes it a lot better, not just for Megan Fitzpatrick, but for the rest of the defensive backfield and the defense as a whole. So I love that idea. No, yeah, that's that's where I think is that it just makes sense. You know, double up there because, you know, they have a lot of draft needs, and whereas I've gone over, there are some safeties I like in this draft class, so I think could be good additions and cheap and 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 be there. But you know what? If you can get solid veterans for not that expensive, because let's face it, all these big big name big high paying safeties getting let go right now, it's a sign that the NFL just does not value safeties like that. So if you're out there in the free market, I mean. Julian Blackman, a good safety, you know, there, there's projections that he could be like five million a year for two or three years. That's a steal for what he brings to the table. My he goodness. can he can like like that's ridiculous. Jordan Whitehead, same thing. Like these are these are good veteran players who you could get on on not expensive contract, not not backbreaker mm-hmm. contract. Like, you know, and, and again, the safety position for the Steelers. And what they try to do in their secondary is huge because they want to disguise things. That's what Terrell Austin's all about. He's like, hey, I need guys who are going to be in the right spots at the right times so that we can show 
cover one, you know, five, you know, you know, man blitz, or we are showing cover four, but really we're going to cover three or we're going to cover two, or we're, we're sending a zero blitz, like all the different things. You need guys who are smart enough to do that, athletic enough to do that, and talented enough to take advantage of it when it forces teams to make mistakes. This past year, they tried it with DeMonte KZ. They tried it with Keanu Neal along with Mika Fitzpatrick. It didn't work out. Neal was on IR. Uh, you know, KZ was here and there. Mika Fitzpatrick had, had to play a lot of out-of-position plays, so he didn't get any interceptions. They want to take another step at that, but you, how you do that? You go and get guys who can play safety, you can rely upon, not just the strong safeties, but also the guys that can rotate because – that's the one pushback. I still say Terrell Evans should be in the mix here because he'd also be ridiculously cheap to bring back. But the uh, the thing is, well, like a Terrell Evans type, Terrell Evans was really good in the box, really good in, in the slot, like helping in those in the situations and underneath. But as soon as he dropped deep, that's where he was a liability. These guys, you can get guys that can do both in, in, in free agency right now, and that just makes a lot of sense for what the Steelers are trying to do with their whole defense. Yeah, that if there's if there's anything that's been really elusive, for this team in the past few years, especially going into last season. It's been trying to find a reliable guy that can play every down at the inside linebacker position and a guy that can play every down at the safety position. I think that's been a hard thing for them to find. Not only guys that can play every down, but guys that can do everything you just mentioned. That can might be able to help in the run game, that can defend in the slot, make plays deep. And it's not that they're not out there, it's just they haven't been able to get their hands on them. And now if you do, it really does change what this defense is capable of. And it, it's hard to use him as an example, but he's the best one, even though he's out there. But Terrell Edmonds, when he was paired up with Micah Fitzpatrick, the one thing they always talk about is that I knew what he was doing, so I knew what I was able to do. And right. the last time we heard the two safeties on this team have that kind of discussion, it was Ryan Clark and Troy Polamalu. Troy Polamalu was going to do what he did, and Ryan Clark would say, look, I know where Troy's going to be. I can go and do this. Now, I'm not saying not to draw any kind of comparison, but what I'm telling you is for those who, who, who may not understand how important that is, that safety communication and relationship dynamic, if you know this guy's going to be here and you might be able to take a risk and cheat and come over here and make this kind of play or be in position because you might have seen something before it sets it up, it allows that to be a lot more fluid, especially in a situation where you talked about what this defense does, where you have guys that will show pre snap looks and do something different. So if you have that kind of level of comfort where you know this guy's going to be here and you can be there, it could cause some quarterbacks to get confused and make some mistakes and turn into more of those splash plays that they like to make on defense on that side of the ball. There's a lot of free agency moves that can be made. The cornerback space is is, shor is shoring up. Jalen Johnson signing a long term deal uh, with the with the Bears. Lejarius Sneed, of course, has been franchise tagged by the Chiefs. They're looking at potential trades. Uh, this is why we say, hey, don't don't try to anticipate free agency too early because it's going to keep changing. And who knows? By the time you're listening to it, maybe it's even more different than from when uh, we were we recorded this on Thursday afternoon. We'll keep you up to date here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. Chris Carter here. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. Let, be, let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Social media, Josh Taylor HD. That's the easiest place. Uh, as far as the TV work, CBSPittsburgh.com. That's where I am. That's usually where I am on weekends. That's where I'll be when I'm back in town next weekend. And we'll keep it rolling. I imagine I'll have something crazy to talk about by the time I get back. And we're doing this again next weekend. So there you go. Absolutely. Thank Josh, thanks so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. And thank you all for joining us here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, uh, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. Thanks again, everybody. Back Monday, I have to go on the road next week to D.C. to cover the ACC tournament where I cover, you all know, Pitt basketball. Will they make the March Madness tournament? We'll find out there. But but while we're doing that, I still will be recording these episodes. We'll still We'll be talking about free agency, all the moves that are going to happen. So if if there's a little bit of, you know, schedules, you know, being rearranged a little bit, I do apologize in advance. But y'all know I'm a busy beaver and I'm going to be go going at it. So thanks again for tuning in. I'll be back Monday with more here in your Pittsburgh Steelers right on the Locked On Steelers podcast. 